Okay, so we're going to take a little look at the Fletcher jet system. Um, we've got it set up here in just one of the back storage rooms here in our Tang facility. Um, and this is the Flex jet unit. Comes with a full carbon fiber, very lightweight tripod. Um, extends to about twice the height that it's currently sat at, um, which is pretty good. And we have the Flex jet unit itself, which is a robotic um, arm, which um, goes in two, three different axes. Um, and then it's got a Bosch laser on the end there as well. Um, the great thing about this FlexJet system is it's connected Bluetooth um, wirelessly to my laptop um, over there um, and connected directly into Autodesk Revit. Um, so what I can do is I can go around and take um, scans using the FlexJet system which will then not only take that scan data but it will then build up a 3D parametric building inside of Autodesk Revit. So I'm just going to go into uh, my Revit system and I'm going to come and choose to level the FlexiJet system. And this will essentially go around and as you can see the, uh, the FlexiJet system itself will start spinning around. It's going to determine where it is in space with regards to its, uh, its floor position and level itself up. So this is essentially calibrating the system. It does come from the factory pre-calibrated internally um, with regards to its distances um, and measurements. But this is just telling Revit how level the floor is so it knows what to do with regards to um, its floor. So once this goes around and takes a few points, Revit will come up and tell me that the system is calibrated, which is fantastic. And then I can come down and, and basically start taking some, some basic measurements. So the first thing I'm going to do is say that I would like to um, align it to an existing wall. Um, the great thing about this, because it is wireless, if we should want to, um, we can use a wireless controller. Make sure it's turned on first, it's always a good start. And this is just a standard Microsoft wireless controller for Windows. And as you can see, I can move that either small bursts or large bursts wirelessly to move the laser and the device around um, to be able to take whatever measurements I should want. Now, whilst I don't use this all the time because it's not quite as accurate as doing it by hand, it's fantastic if you can't be next to the system. So for example, if I need to measure a point very accurately in this corner, I can walk over to this corner while taking my controller with me, and then I can obviously walk around and take those measurements with that controller um, and get the accurate measurement I need. For now, I'm not going to use it. I just wanted to show the functionality that it is there if you should want to use it. In this case, Revit's asking me to align the device with a wall. It doesn't matter which wall you use, um, so I'm just going to come and pick this wall in front of me just here. I'm going to align it on the left-hand side of the wall. There's a little touchpad, which I can touch on. The device clicks. My laptop makes a noise to let me know that Revit has taken in the measurement. So I'm just going to click once on the left-hand side of the wall, once on the right-hand side of the wall, and then once at the base of the wall, basically at floor level. So that takes three measurements. So as well as calibrating inside of Revit, that's also aligned the device with an existing wall. Again, to make sure that it's sat flat on the floor. At this point, I'm going to say that I'd like to create a plane. So I'm going to choose Create Plane inside of Revit. I'm going to give that a name, such as Ceiling, for example. And then once again, I can come over to the FlexiJet system. I'm just going to pull it straight up, point it straight up, sorry, at one of the ceiling tiles. And again, hit the sensor button. That will directly and wirelessly send the measurement in to Revit. I can just come ahead and press OK. It says that the plane has been set directly inside of Revit. And as you can see in the Revit system, that creates a plane for me at the right level and at the exact correct measurement, which is fantastic. So from here, I'm just going to go ahead and have a look. Um, my template here is in German. Um, that's literally just because the, the system is um, German founded. Um, I just have loaded up a German template instead of an English template. It doesn't really matter too much. For this example. But I've gone into this template, I can then basically say to Revit, okay, I want my bottom to be the floor and I want the top to be the ceiling. Once this is done, I can go in and choose that I would like to add a series of walls. So once that wall tool comes up, I can literally just go around inside of, um, or sorry, using my FlexiJet system. And again, you don't have to be mega accurate, you choose a point on the left of the wall and a point on the right of the wall for every wall, and it will go and build them up inside of Revit. So, point on the left, point 
on the right, that will go on to the next wall. After each wall, you have to come over and press OK. It just gives me a, an error that's saying it's slightly off axis. I'm just going to press cancel because I didn't actually have to press OK after each wall. Um, I could have just gone and done the rest of the wall automatically, which is just a little bit of a human error. Uh, so let's just go for that again. Point on the left of the wall, point on the right of the wall, that will create the first wall. We can then go for a start point on the left of the wall and on the right of the wall. I'm just shooting through the staircase there. And again on the far wall. And I'm not being overly accurate here. I want to keep this uh, demonstration as short and sweet as possible. I'm just making sure I don't knock this system because if you do knock it, um, whilst it is a very rugged system, it's not going to break it, it will just um, take the alignment out of the system, so I'll have to realign it. I'm going to skip this, uh, this beam for now, we'll do that in just a second. Let's go all the way around to that wall there. Let's do the end wall at the top a little bit. And then finally this wall to complete the bounding of the room. So with a bit of luck, once we've done that, we've basically selected two points on each of the walls. I should be able to come over into Revit and I should be able to press OK. And pressing OK is going to give me a warning saying that the walls aren't straight. We do have tools inside of Revit which allow us to automatically straighten the walls. In this instance, I want an as-built scan of the room or an as-built model. So if the, the walls are, um, are curved or, or at an angle or off-center, FlexJet will pick them up. Same with the ceiling, same with the floor. So I'm just going to press OK. Give it a couple of seconds and we should be able to now do a, a zoom in window or a zoom all. I am using my touchpad um, so I don't have a mouse here, I have to excuse. So it's come up with a couple of issues, uh, mainly regarding this wall, it's not exactly straight. I've obviously picked two incorrect points for that wall. Um, it's not too much of a problem because we can just drag it, it is just a standard Revit object after all. So I can just drag that into its correct location and make any modifications um, that I need to. So I'm just going to choose to collect, connect a number of walls and just come in. This is basically Revit's trimmed corner. I'm just going to make sure that they are all twi trimmed like so and that gives us our basic walls. Now if you want to, those walls can then obviously be assigned a specific type. It's just like using Revit, okay? So you go in and choose your specific Revit wall types. I know for a fact that these are all internal walls, so I'm just going to leave them as they are. However, this one is an external wall, so I'm going to go in and choose to have a slightly thicker wall on there, like so. So that builds up my walls relatively quickly inside of Revit, and again, they are 3D parametric walls. What I want to do now is try and show you potentially the, um, how precise this can be. Um, I have missed a couple of objects out here, so it might not be exactly spot on, but what I can do is I can specifically say, okay, let's go and have a look at this in 3D very, very quickly, and let's just see what's, um, what's going on. So for example, I can say, FlexerJet, I would like you to move to a specific point. I'm gonna say that I'd like FlexerJet to point up into this top right corner of the room over here. So using my Revit interface, I can spin the model around, choose a plane and tell FlexerJet to specifically go to a point. The laser should start to spin, and again, it might not be exactly right because I've missed out certain elements of the room. If we'd have done this with a level of accuracy and put all of the room elements in there, we would have been quite spot on. That was about, say, two inches or so away, which isn't too bad considering I've missed certain aspects of the room out. So I'm quite happy with that. Let's do another one in a slightly different location. Again, FlexerJet, I would like you to move to a specific point, and this time I want you to go and point or move over into this external wall and look at the top left-hand corner. Again, the camera will move around, the laser will move around, and it will go and point in the corner. Again, it's not particularly accurate for this specific example because I've missed certain aspects of, of the building out, but the idea here is to show you that we have a device that is very capable of going in and measuring systems inside of Revit. We're just going to go ahead and add a couple of doors just to show you some of the other features that we have. So let's just go back into our plan 
and let's come up and say that we would like to add a door. I'm going to choose to add a door and it's a very intuitive interface, it's just going to ask me what I would like to do. I'm just going to add the one that's just behind the camera here, just to make the cameraman's life a little bit easier. I'm going to come in and just open this door up and just take a couple of measurements with the laser from inside the door. Um, so first and foremost, it wants the inside. Um, I could move the, the laser a little bit closer, but again, this is just to give you a brief overview of the functionality. So somewhere roughly on the left-hand side of the frame, we press the, the, the touchpad and that takes that input. Again, I can do the same thing on the right-hand side of the frame. It'll take the input. It now wants something on the top of the frame. Again, I'm just glancing back to my laptop, just um, taking note of what it's asking me for. Now it wants the face of the door just above where the handle is positioned. I'm just going to close the door now and just get the laser roughly on the top left. Um, obviously it is a laser device so you want to make sure you don't shine it in your eyes. Somewhere around about there, absolutely fine. With a bit of luck now if we come across to Revit and press OK, it will place the door into there for us. You can see it's picked up the correct positioning of the door, the correct size of the door, as well as the opening angle. Now, theoretically, that should be um, a little bit more accurate based on the position of that, um, of that door. So with a bit of luck, let's just do move to click point. Um, let's just zoom in a little bit more first. And let's say we want to move to click point on the door, on the corner. And as you can see, that is a lot more accurate. That's pretty much bang on where I touched um, with regards to uh, the door placement. So that gives you an idea of the level of accuracy you can have with your FlexiJet. Now, the reason it wasn't quite exact or exactly on point, so it's on this particular part of the frame, rather than the flat part, usually you'd bring the device closer and you would capture the inside elements of the frame while placing the door. That's the end reason it's not gone exactly in the corner. But it's pretty quick. Um, it's, it's pretty accurate um, and, and if you're doing surveys as built and you want to get that information into Revit, as you can see, it can do that very, very quickly. Um, there's a whole and vast array of other options that we have in there. I'm just going to show you one more. We do have the ability to add windows. It works exactly the same as the door, but just based on keeping this video as, as short and sweet as possible, I'm just going to say that I would like to place um, a Revit family item on a specific point. For example, the light switch that we have, um, or a couple of light switches that we have around the room. We've, we've only had this unit a couple of weeks now, um, so we're in the process of creating our, our English templates. Um, so I'm just gonna choose generic models, and I've got a standard light switch here. I can choose where that is inserted. In other words, what point of the light switch would you like to choose and would you like to create? In this case, I'm gonna go to the bottom right-hand corner of the light switch. So I choose that exact point inside of Revit. I go ahead and press OK, and it should ask me for a point from the FlexiJet unit. So if I just spin this around, um, and again, depending on how accurate you are, is gonna depend on the placement of this, but that's okay for this example. Revit will take that input, and with a little bit of luck, if I spin this camera around inside of Revit, um, we should see that we've now got a light switch just here, on this wall. Let's just go into our floor plan once more. You can see it's added also a schematic in there as well, which is fantastic. Let's just add another one of those. So we'll come um, and add the one just over here. So in Revit once more, measure family elements, choose the family elements and the location again. So we're gonna choose once more generic models, press okay, and again, take the measurement. Roughly there, that takes the measurement and puts it into Revit. And again, that gives you the ability to, to, um, to use that. Let's just change my zoom and zoom out a little bit. And you can see that's added both of those elements directly on here. Again, if we want to, we can select these walls and change the type of wall. So they're just a generic wall type at the minute. We could come in, even though there's been a door added, we can come in and change that type of wall if we want to. 
and that will change the wall build up inside of Revit. So once you've got that, that, um, those walls in there, it works just like any other Revit model. So that's about all I wanted to show you for today. We can do a number of other things inside of FlexJet. We'll do a more advanced and a more in-depth demo uh, in due course. But for example, we could add the columns in. We could potentially draw a staircase by using model lines. Things like this, we can add in as either an individual wall or we could just say to FlexJet and Revit, okay, I want to trace a load of lines and then create an extrusion. So creating family items using the Flex FlexJet system, tables, chairs, doors, windows, whatever it is, is completely possible. I hope that was useful. Um, it's a great product, it is very new. As I say, we've only had it a couple of weeks. Um, the demonstrations we've done so far have been very positive. So if you've got any questions, just give us a call, drop us an email, um, and we'll catch you next time.